Stepping into the Kampa area, lingering in this gravity-defying landscape of formidable peaks, meandering along paths on mountaintops, it feels as if our perception of north and south has been changed to east and west. These are the Hangduan Mountains, which stretch 1,300 kilometers from north to south. According to the traditional geographical concept of the Tibetan people, they are known as the Four Rivers and Six Ranges, and they are home to the Kampa Tibetans. The Hangduan Mountains are unique among all mountain ranges on Earth because their ridges are oriented north-south. The elevation of the Qinghai Tibet Plateau is around 4,500 to 5,000 meters. Long ago, the elevation here was just 1,000 meters or so. But as the result of the motion of the Asian and European continents over millions of years, numerous mountains, rivers, and lakes were formed, changing the climate and other natural conditions. Qinzhang In late spring or early summer, gusts of wind arrive here all the way from the Indian and Pacific Oceans, and they bring with them moisture from tropical monsoons. This constant moisture, channeled by the unique geography of the Hangduan Mountains and the valleys of the Himalayas, nurtures every corner of the plateau. After much effort, in September 2009, the origin of the Three Rivers Research Expedition finally defined the geographical coordinates of the Yangtze River, the Yellow River, and the Lantan River. Their upriver sources are the Danchu, Kachu, and Zachu, respectively. It is here in this area covering 318,000 kilometers that the three rivers originate right in the heart of the plateau. It is, if you like, the resting place of their souls. People call this China's water tower and it's no exaggeration. This gigantic water tower stands out among a series of famous mountain ranges such as the Kunlui, Kukushuri, Bayenkala, and the Tangula Mountains. With more than 2,000 peaks at an elevation of over 5,000 meters, they are the 
highest mountains on earth. For eons, these three rivers have nourished the Chinese people and Chinese civilization. These mighty rivers flow in parallel, enter enormous gorges, and take innumerable twists and turns, while singing a song of harmony about the Chinese people. In the Tibetan language, the snow-capped peaks of the mountain group known as Mingling Gangri, centered in the Hangduan Mountains, is known as Kawad Gabor. Kawad Gabor, Kangrin Bochu Fung in Ali Prefecture, and Nyantian Tangla Shan in northern Tibet are equally regarded as the most sacred mountains in Tibet. Mount Crown Prince, the main peak of Mingling Gangru, stands at 6,740 meters above sea level. Snow water oozes from the mountain into the Lantang River opposite Bu village. Dozens of Tibetan households have lived on this terrace across from the water for generations. Bu in Tibetan means hug, but to express it more vividly, we can say that Bu village is like an infant lying in the arms of Kawad Gabor. In recent years, drinking wine has become something of a fashion in big cities. Since Bu village lies in the valley of the Lantang River where there is plenty of sunlight, a broad range of temperatures and a plentiful supply of water, there can be no place more suitable to plant grapes than here. This old couple have three acres of grapes here. Right now, it's time to harvest the grapes. As required by the wine producers, the old couple cover the bunches of grapes with paper. The coated grapes will remain on the vine until the frosts come in October. In due course, the dehydrated grapes will be shipped out to brew ice wine, which is both rare and highly sought after. However, old Sina is less interested in who the end user is than he is in the Sutra Hall. Only the villagers know that old Sina also goes by the nickname Grandpa Bear. About 20 years ago, he was a well-known hunter, and perhaps his nickname is derived from the fact he has hunted down no less than 15 bears in the nearby forest. But these days, Grandpa Bear is not the man he used to be. Kalle <laughs> In the eyes of the people of eastern Tibet, Gawad Gabor is one of the most sacred mountains. It is, in fact, regarded as an honor of a lifetime to make a pilgrimage here and walk around it. Every year, streams of pious pilgrims undertake the long and arduous journey to this holy site, prostrating themselves in reverence at regular intervals along the way.
It's said that the first man to undertake a pilgrimage around Kawad Gabor did so around 700 years ago. His name was Talku. He was of the Kama Kagyu sect, and he was the second reincarnation of Jumda. People have been making the pilgrimage here ever since. Mount Baima, which lies east of the origin of the Three Rivers, stands between the Jinsha River and the Lantang River. The forest here is home to a special primate, the Yunnan snub-nosed monkey. These monkeys are said by many to have faces very similar to our own. These strange mountain inhabitants were first discovered by a French missionary in 1890. The diet of these monkeys is primarily made up of a special lichen, also known as Asnia, which is found in forests of coniferous trees such as spruce or fir. As the slowly growing Asnias feed on the sap of the trees, a proliferation of them would endanger the forest. The monkeys, however, devour many of the Asnias, fulfilling a vital role in the biological chain in the forests of the Hangduan Mountains. One of Tibet's most sacred creatures is the black-necked crane. Like the monkeys, the black-necked cranes are rare and unique to China. The Tibetans call them La Xia Zhong Zhong Ga Mo, which means the white divine birds. As the only plateau bird in the world, they are a national first-class protected species. Treated with reverence and welcomed by the local people, the black-necked cranes arrive on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau in summer to breed, and in winter they congregate on the farmlands. Woman两就结为弟兄了 Niting Canyon of Cha Chan County in the Hangduan Mountains is home to a hot spring fish. While we know that spring water comes from a cave at the foot of Mount Rijiao, the fish, however, seem to come from nowhere. A long time ago, Chopel Monastery, a monastery dedicated to the native Bon religion, stood on the mountain. During Buddhist festivals, monks would play music by the fountain, and upon hearing it, the fish inside the cave would emerge. Finding this to be more than a little unusual, the monks decided to feed the fish, and the tradition has continued for a thousand years right up to the present day. In Kampa, this respect for wildlife finds its expression everywhere. For instance, the famous Jujia Monastery in Daocheng County and Nigor Monastery in Mangkam County are nurseries for a frequent visitor, the second-class national protected animal, the Tibet-eared pheasant.
Early summer is a busy time for farmers in various parts of Kamba as they prepare to harvest barley. At altitudes as high as that found in Dungchen County in Chamdor, the distribution of barley is dictated by the landscape and it results in stacked terraces, a truly amazing natural spectacle. In the valley lies Rewatcher County, and the barley fields are on both sides of the road. The harvested barley will be dried on a shelf. The locals are now heading for the pastures, most of which located in the grass-covered hills at an altitude of 4,000 metres or more. The family of Choyum Dralka from Shilang village pitched their tent here several days ago. Thirty-seven-year-old Choyum Drolkar is mother to three children, and her youngest, Dondrop Wanyel, is just nine months old. In summer, people here become extremely busy grazing the livestock. Among the herds of cows, there are both pregnant and milking cows. Unfortunately, just a few days after her arrival at the pasture, Choyum Drolkar became tired and ill. <laughs> <laughs> Just six months ago, her sister, 20-year-old Chodron, became a nun. But as this month is the summer retreat month for monks and nuns, Chodron has come home to lend a hand. After they are born, calves graze for about two months, but in order to ensure they receive adequate nutrition, they cannot be weaned until they are five months old. Summer is the peak season for cows to produce milk, and whatever remains after the calves have had their share will be taken to the market. Chodron dearly loves her calves, so she occasionally feeds them milk dregs. The yak is a mammal well adapted to this highest altitude region, and Tibetan shepherds cannot do without them. The yak is an amazing animal. It provides food, milk, wool for tents, manure for fuel, and can be used as a means of transport. For these reasons, the Tibetans call it nor, which means treasure. There is, however, something odd about the origin of the yak. Some hold that the yak originated in Tibet, and that wild yaks are the ancestor of the domesticated animals. And dynasty historical records tell us that yaks were hybridized with cattle during the Zhou dynasty. Scientists, after analyzing yak fossils, have concluded that around three million years ago, wild yaks were widespread over the entire northeastern Eurasian continent. However, with the subsequent rising of the Tibetan Plateau, an event that transformed the landscape and climate, the yaks migrated here, becoming one of the area's earliest inhabitants. All things leave their own trails, 
Today, after billions of years of transformation, the Hangduan Mountains boast formidable peaks and deep rivers, while the Tibetan Plateau features clusters of mountain ranges and rushing rivers. The evolution of species in this area resulted in the Hangduan Mountains becoming colorful and vibrant, and over time, the people of this area developed the wisdom needed to breed animals and thrive in this challenging region. Rungcha County, located in the upper reaches of the Dadu River, has a number of unique multi-story buildings. The local people call them towers or Diaolo. According to Han Dynasty historical records, in particular the later handbook Southwestern Barbarians, these towers go by another name, Xionglong. This means there have been towers here since at least the Qin or Han periods over 2,000 years ago. The family of Bu Ruche from Swar Pool Village lives in this tower. According to Bu Ruche, a tower with people living in it is called the Home Tower, and the one for defense is called the Guard Tower. Next to Bu Ruche's Home Tower is a guard tower that is 40 meters high. Looking closer at it, the entire guard tower is made up of irregular stones that are not joined together using any adhesive substances. Yet, despite years of exposure to the elements, it remains intact. The home tower of Bu Ruche was constructed by one of his great-great-grandfathers about 150 years ago. His great-great-grandfather was a monk, and to this day, the family has retained several Buddhist instruments passed down from his time. As for the ancient guard tower, 58-year-old Buracha has no idea when it was built or who was the builder. Ancient stone towers are found in the greatest numbers at Swapul, Junglu, and Pu Ding of Danba. Now, only 260 Diaolo remain, but in the past, there were perhaps as many as 10,000 of them. They were, at one time, referred to as the Oriental Pyramids. In May 1978, the site of a primitive societal village dating back to about four or five thousand years ago was discovered in the Chamdor area. As the site stands on the west shore of the Lantang River close to a Carib village, it is called the Carib site. Excavations have confirmed that the Carib site is one of the highest Neolithic sites ever excavated. It's located at an elevation of over 3,100 meters. From the discovery of the it is divided into two parts. The first is 5,000 years, the second is 4,000 years. It is the two cultures of the ancient culture. The first culture is the first culture. It is the first culture of the ancient culture. Basically, 
，那就是他已经跟现代藏族有了非常接近还在相似，所以就我们说他是祖先嘛。Among the remains found at the Karaf site were a group of buildings and a half cave structure. Some believe the structure first appeared in the Yangshao culture of the Yellow River Basin. The people who inhabited the Karaf site used tools such as microliths and shells, and they ate food such as corn. These people, in whose veins ran the blood of both ancient tribes who migrated here 5,000 years ago and that of the indigenous tribes, represent the first spark of civilization on the plateau. This area, that is the origin of the three rivers, absorbs the quintessence of heaven and earth on the Great Plateau. It nourishes all living creatures of the Handuan Mountains and also nurtures the ethnic minorities of the region. People whose homes have been here for thousands of years creating a glorious and splendid plateau culture. During the Songsten Ganpo era in the 7th century, the Tuvo dynasty established its capital in Lhasa, making the Lhasa Valley the political, economic and cultural centre of the region. This is the cradle of Ru and San, one of the three historical and geographical regions in the Tibetan tradition. The three regions include Nari Korsum, north of Tibet, the four regions of Ru and San, the center of Tibet, and the six plateaus of Dorka, south and east of Tibet. Most Ndor people speak a nomad dialect, while the Kham people use the Kham dialect. About 1,000 years ago, during the heyday of the Tang dynasty, Princess Wenchang and Princess Jingchang of Tang were married to Tibetan kings. From that time on, the Tang-Tibet ancient road formed a bridge between Tibet and the Central Plains in terms of cultural exchanges. Even today, in the heart of Tibetans, Princess Wenchang is still revered as a bodhisattva, and there are many legends about her. Gyeagu, the capital of the Yushu Tibetan Autonomous Prefecture, Qinghai Province. The 3,000 km long Tang Tibet Road winds its way from Chang'an. In the remote Kham areas, this temple with Han and Tibetan building styles demonstrates this is the place where Princess Wenchang once came 1,300 years ago. In the Princess Wenchang Temple in the Bona Valley, we can see nine statues of Buddha carved on a cliff. The main statue is of Tathagata, while the other eight statues are eight bodhisattvas. The temple is also called Nampa Nangzed Chokhang. The book History of Tibetan Kingdoms also tells how Princess Wenchang tarried here and had statues carved. At that time, the Han princess arrived at Deng Ma Yan accompanied by a Tibetan envoy. She had the statue of Maitreya Bodhisattva carved on the cliff, rising to a height of 80 feet. And she also had two volumes of Wishes of Samantabhadra inscribed at the same time. I think this 说明了当时藏族人民对这么一个传播先进文化、先进生产方式的，呃，公主是非常敬仰的，因此把她供起来像神一样的，也有到处有她的传说。Not far from the Bono Valley is the Legba Valley, known for its enchanting scenery and numerous piles of rocks inscribed with Mani prayers. They line both sides of a tranquil, crystal clear stream. They are convincing evidence of the people's love and admiration for this great princess. 
At the entrance to the Legba Valley, the stream flows into the Tontian He. On the cliff, there's an ancient stone carving. After being identified by experts from the Qinghai Provincial Institute of Cultural Relics and Archaeology, it's been confirmed as a cliff carving from the time of Princess Wenchang, and it's been given the name Princess Wenchang Worshipping the Buddha. The man in Tibetan costume with brocade wrapped tower-like around his head is Songsten Gampo, and the hand lady beside him is his wife, Princess Wenchang. As the headstream of the Yangtze River, the Tongtian River is about a few feet away from the origin of the 10,000 kilometer long Yangtze River. Over the centuries, this pagoda has witnessed the rushing and surging of the endless rivers over the centuries. But in which dynasty was it built? The mysteries and veils of the plateau created in this area known as the Source of the Three Rivers are gradually revealing themselves. With the advent of the 21st century, people are devoting more attention to the depth of the areas surrounding the origin of the three rivers. In the studio in Chengdu, a pressing cultural preservation project is now in full swing, with singers and instrumentalists coming from remote rural areas to record Batang Xianzi, a type of folk dance and song from Batang, passed down from generation to generation. As planned by the Gaza Prefecture government, all forms of national vocal music here will be recorded digitally and preserved so that future generations can appreciate and study them. 55-year-old Professor Norbu Gyaltsen was born in Xinlong County by the Yalong River. His hobby is to explore every ditch and ravine in the Hangduan Mountains and record what he finds using his camera. Uh The mountains as they stand face even taller mountains, while the rivers as they play face even longer rivers. Our ability to comprehend what we see is limited. The mountains and rivers have been here countless thousands of years longer than we. As we look down from the peak, we see villages scattered among valleys and riversides. And we find sufficient reasons to make us wonder at how, thousands of years, human activities thrived among these cold, inhospitable deserts, precipitous cliffs, steep slopes, dense forests, and lakes. But they flourished by the origin of the three rivers and became a driving force for civilization.